Hey everybody, what's up? It's some type of artist, and welcome back to Let's Play Legend of Zelda. Uh, Legend of... What's this game called? Legend of Link. Zelda Returns. Let's Play Instruments. Anyway, for... Do you have the Forest Temple now? This is like the best temple in the whole game. Well, I, I don't know. It's my favorite temple, personally. It, it always kind of feels like... Whatever came before the Kokiri, this is what, what there was. I always really liked how this temple was just, like, a giant mansion. And the entire, uh, sacred forest meadow, that all just kind of led up to the whole, you know, mansion part. There's- it really just feels like this was, like, a really important place to something long ago in the past, and it never really is explained what it was or is. But, that's what I really like about the Nintendo 64 games. I don't need, like, an entire history presented to me, but there's enough there where I can just kind of make up my own history if I want to, or ponder about, you know, what there was here, and I don't know. Not saying the other temples don't do something similar, because they totally do. I mean, I really have to wonder what the whole point of the fire temple is, because, uh, whoops, that's not how you jump from trees. The fire temple, I mean... I like to imagine it was some kind of... some kind of facility at some point in time. Like, all those cells the Gorons are trapped in. Like, I don't know, were they cells? Were they storerooms? Were they something? I don't know. But, I don't know, they, they just kind of feel like mines to me a little bit. And maybe that's where, like, Twilight Princess got their idea from for, uh... forget what it was called. I forget all the temple names in Twilight Princess off the top of my head. I know the fourth, the first one was the Forest Temple, but I don't know. It's not quite this one, but Water Temple. I mean, what kind of religious place was that for the Zora? Don't even get me started about what kind of twisted shit went down in the Shadow Temple. But I don't know. I, and I guess that's like one of the things that like really makes Ocarina of Time stand out to me, because Ocarina of Time does have some really good dungeons in them. You know, they may not be, like, the most complex in the series. I mean, it was the first 3D Zelda game. But, you know, they really do set an interesting atmosphere. So, the main goal of this temple is the elevator of the boss room, which we'll also need a boss key for now. Has been, uh, sealed away by these Poe sisters. So we're gonna have to go track them down. Get the fire back, which, honestly, <laughs> you don't have to, like, carry the fire back or anything on a Deku stick or anything. You can't even use Deku sticks anymore. But, um... Just defeat the Poe sisters, and you'll be able to, you know, get the fire back to where it needs to be. These things here. These are the bubbles from a lot of the other Zelda games. Unlike the other Zelda games, though, you won't get cursed if you hit by them. Like, normally, if you get hit by a, a bubble, you won't be able to use your sword, but that's, uh, not really much of a problem anymore. So these guys here, these are, like, these are a recurring enemy when you're an adult, but they are kind of a little bit like mini-bosses. You'll get better at fighting them once you kind of, like, learn how to, how they operate. I find stabbing actually works the best, but these are the Stalfos. Um, I think you might be able to do something with bombs with them, actually. I'm trying to remember. He just made me drop mine, though. Can you please come over to the bomb? Dang. I don't know. I, I kind of remember someone doing something with these Stalfos and a bomb before, because normally... Well, at, at least in A Link to the Past, when you're fighting the Stalfos, the only way to actually kill them after you kind of, like make them fall apart, is if you bomb them. But, you don't really have to worry about that too much here. You just gotta defeat them with your sword. I definitely, uh, if you haven't really been using your shield all that much, I definitely keep my shield up at all times. Um, besides when you're attacking. Because those guys will hit pretty hard. And what do we get? It's probably another key, right? Da -da -da -da. Yeah, so Adult Link, uh, his part of the game introduces keys to the game, which 
honestly shouldn't be much of a surprise to any Zelda veteran, but you may have, I, I guess, like, when the game came out, and if you were following Zelda, did you get out of here? Um, you may have been wondering why there were no keys in the game up until this point, and I guess it's just a adult link thing. Well, no, that's not true. There are our keys in the Spirit Temple for Child Link to get, I think. But a lot of these places are actually barred off. You can come over here, there's another song of time block, so let's get rid of that here. Yeah, so I was um I was thinking about what I was saying at the end of the last episode. Um It's been a few days since that recording, so I may not get this exactly right, but I was talking about when Link was looking at the place where uh Saria was. Um, and how she's not there anymore. That was, like, really sad. Because, you know, you're remembering something that used to be there where it isn't anymore. And... I don't know. This may not be, like... I, I don't know. People are making me feel like this is something really stupid to, like, be affected by. But I'm gonna try to maybe give an example of what I meant for when I was talking about uh, outside of the forest temple. Is there anything there? No, there wasn't. One of these rooms, you just gotta... But anyway, so recently two uh, stores that I've um, I frequented a lot over the past 10, 15, 20 years are, uh, are going to close. And I've been pretty upset by it. I don't really quite shop as much as I used to, at least at, like, those places. So, I can't, like, say, you know... I can't say with full confidence, you know, I'm upset because these stores that I like to shop at are closing. Because it's not like I can't get whatever I need from them, someplace else. One of them is, um, a Barnes & Noble, and I feel like that in itself is kind of like a joke, because it's like, books. Books are dead. It's only going to be a matter of time, and that, that in itself is another topic that I'll... <laughs> I can save for another time, but... You know, in, in the case of this Barnes & Noble, um, you know, I, I do have a lot of good memories there. It, it sounds like a stupid thing, you know, memories of shopping at a place, but I, I don't know. Something about it just makes me really sad that it's going. Like, my very first job uh, was pretty near the Barnes & Noble, actually. It was in the same plaza. So, I remember it was in my senior year of high school, when I was on my breaks, I would go over there and go look through the manga. Because I was really into anime and manga when I was in high school and college. And now that I had, like, a reliable, disposable income, you know, I was trying out a bunch of new titles and everything like that, and it was exciting for me. You know, it was just exciting to be out there with my own money that I earned myself, and, oh. Can I do a Scarecrow here? Can I do it from here? Sorry, <laughs> I just had to remember what the song was. Um, no, I guess I can't do it from here. Um, yeah, I used to, um, when I decided that I wanted to, um switch my major over to creative writing. Um, I used to go over to that Barnes & Noble. They had writers groups there. You know, I went for like... I don't know, like a good year or two, I guess. Um, and it was different than my, um, than my school's writing groups. It was very different, and I thought it was interesting to see how, you know, how like a, a writing, um, workshop works outside of a school setting, and while I didn't always, like, enjoy it, I, I did find it pretty important to my own writing for for a while. Um, I discovered, like, a lot of new authors there, 
whenever me and my friends would hang out, we'd, um, you know, we went into stores a lot, you know. We bought a lot of things from a lot of different places, and it sounds kind of silly, but, you know, the memory of going to those stores with them is also, like, good memories I have with my friends as well. And, you know, just because the store is closing, I, I get that, you know, it's, it's not like my memories are going away or anything, you know. It's not like I have to, like, forget or anything, but I always kind of feel like when something like this happens, it, it, sometimes it just goes from, like, a happy memory to a sad one. You know what I mean? Because it's like, you can't, like, go and be at that place anymore. It's just, it's just gonna be gone now. You know, like, if you have you ever had, like, a memory and you just kind of wanted to, like, just go back to the place where it happened? And then, to, just to find out, it's, like, not there anymore. Like, I remember so hearing someone tell a story that, um, their parents got engaged at a certain restaurant and they wanted to go back to the restaurant and they found out it was, uh, it was closed now. And there was, like, a, a dumpster there instead, and it, like, completely, like, tarnished the memory and made them sad and stuff like that. But, anyway, I, I mean, I, I don't know if that really makes sense. I don't really know if I'm explaining it all too well. Um, it's just, I, I guess my point is, you know, I've had a lot of positive experiences there, both... You know, as personal memories and as, you know, being a customer at that particular place. And when, I, I guess in this case also, when bookstores are becoming so difficult to come by. Because they really kind of are, you know, fading out of existence. It's just really disheartening having such a important thing to you just be taken away. Like I said, I, I guess it all depends on perspective, too. Like, I've tried to kind of explain this to a few different people, and they really just kind of shrug it off and be like, yeah, shitty stuff happens in life, but you gotta move on. And it's like, yeah, thanks, that's such helpful advice in this situation. Like, I'm not s sitting in my bed just like, lamenting the fact that these places aren't going to be there anymore. But it is just something that does just kind of make me sad and melancholy. And I kind of, and that's where it went back to like the thing with Saria on that stump. And it, and honestly, it just kind of makes me more sad the more times I play Ocarina of Time. Because realistically, what, you see her there like once before becoming an adult and that's when you learn Saria's song. So it's like, it's not like the game did a fantastic job making you feel like, you know, this was your and Saria's place. You had like one moment there and that was it. But like the more I play this game and the more I see her there each of those times, the more I just kind of feel like, you know what, even though the game didn't say it, I can believe that... You know, this was Saria's spot. This is where she always sat. This is where she always played her ocarina. You know, hell, maybe even, like, her and Link had, uh, you know, their own kind of moments there. And when Link goes up to that stump, after going through, like, a ton of monster, a ton of parts with, uh, of the forest and the Lost Woods filled with monsters, his home, like, twisted and I don't know it's it looks so different now because it's just not the safe place it used to be it's just some kind of like I don't know it's it's been tainted by time what can I say uh, and then to finally get to the very end and hope like the one thing that he could rely on was there just was not anymore and he's just like looking at that empty stump it's like all of these emotions just like Link doesn't portray them, but I, I guess since he's like an avatar character, I can portray them on him for myself. It's just like your friend's not there anymore, your home's not there anymore, the life you had like that isn't there anymore, and you're looking at that stump and all you can kind of wonder about is, where did it all go? Why can't I get it back anymore? 
you know? And that's what I'm going to be feeling like whenever I look at that Barnes & Noble building, whatever it becomes now. I'm going to be thinking about, like, parts of my high school life when I was there, parts of my college life when I was there, parts of my, you know, post-college life, like, I guess, like, my now life when I was there, all the different people I went into that building with. And I guess, I, I don't know, it, it does, maybe it is stupid, but, you know, I've read stories, I've read, you know, short stories, poetry, stuff like that, about this kind of stuff, and that kind of stuff really makes me, like, happy to know I'm, like, not the only person in the world that feels stuff like that, but when I'm trying to explain this to people here in my own life, and they're just, I, I don't know, just not getting it, just kind of, like, throwing it to the side, it's like, okay, who cares? It just, it kind of makes me sad, and it's just, I don't know. It kind of just makes me wish the people that did understand were still around in my life now. So, it just kind of re-echoes all the thought about, you know, some part of you is just now being lost again. And all you can look at it is a place where something used to be. That was a song, that song went something like that. But I was like, what, who, who was it? I can't think of it now. I think Vanessa Carlton, on her Lieberman album, had a song that went somewhere like this, something like that. Like something where something somewhere used to be, or somewhere, I, I don't know. If I, I'll put it up on the, <laughs> put the title or something up on the screen, maybe you can go listen to it and... Maybe she'll do, like, a better job at <laughs> making you understand, like, how I'm feeling about that kind of thing, but... I don't know. Yeah, in this room, the Stalfos will come back to life if you take too long with the other one. Maybe that's what I was thinking at, if you, like, put a bomb down there. Oh, no, it doesn't. This is just the circumstance where you just have to, you know... Just defeat them quickly. But anyway, that's my story. That's my trying to explain where I'm coming from with that. You know, I haven't written anything in a really long time. I've been really kind of wanting to get back into it. Um, I don't know, maybe I should take a shot about writing a short story or a flash fiction or something about that and trying to put my whole feelings into the matter in a better form than trying to explain it while playing a video game. But, yeah, it really sucks about that. That Barnes & Noble closing. You know what else really sucks? Eh, these paintings. So there is some way to, like, you know, not make this part suck. But, for the life of me, I... Not very good at it. You gotta... You can't be too close to them. So there are these... This one and another sister will have, like... They'll disappear if you're, like... Just kind of looking straight at them. They'll have, like, a boo thing. You gotta be at, it like, an angle, or... You gotta kind of be quick about it. Oh, jeez, I don't know. What are you doing? Can I cheese it? Yup. By the way, we got the bow. I know, I haven't done any type of good job about explaining what this temple is, but I mean, let's be honest, everybody knows Ocarina of Time. I also found out recently, though, that you can use Deku Nuts to actually make the pose reappear after you, uh, after they disappear. So, you can go like that. And like that. And like that. And we're done. We got the first flame back. I don't know what I'm going to do about this video. I'm going to have the 20 minutes. I don't know if I'm going to split it or make like an extra long video for, you know, the temple. I'm going to go for like a few more minutes, maybe. And then, uh... I don't know. I guess, I guess I'll split it up. 
You know, I spent most of the episodes talking about that. That story, I kind of feel like maybe that should just be, like, the whole episode. It's just like, let's chat and talk about this one stupid thing. By the way, you can do, uh... Well, you can do, a, like, a quick spin attack like that if you rotate the control stick. I've always found it pretty hard to do. And I think it kind of messes up my control stick even more than it probably already is. I can't even say Mario Party was, like, blamed for it. I guess it's just kind of... I don't know. Just using it too much. But you know what? The N64 controller, I... The other one I have, isn't really... Wasn't... I didn't really use it all that often. It was just, like, you know, Player 2's controller. So, I, I don't know. That one also feels kind of loose as the control stick. But maybe it's just, like, that's how the N64 analog stick is. Alright. Oop. Oh. One, two, are we fighting upstairs now? Three, easy peasy. What's in here? I think it's the compass. All these big chests where Link does this like suspenseful opening the chest up thing. And these are all either for the dungeon map, the compass, or the dungeon item. And the compass and the dungeon map are actually came in handy for me more than you might think. Because some of these rooms in this game... You know, you may not be able to tell if it's like a hallway and then there's two doors on either side but you have to like fight Stalfos or something in the middle of it. It's it is helpful to like have the compass let you know which way you came in from. Like the room where we got the bow, that room always tripped me up about you know where I was supposed to go. Uh, I'll take those actually. Of course, nowadays I kind of know, you know. You're sup oh, did I miss a key somewhere? I did. I missed a key somewhere. Nowadays, I know there's a rug at the doorway where you're supposed to go afterwards, but before then, I didn't know before then. What's up these steps? I don't think anything's up these steps. Oh! Uh, Wallmaster, I did not hear you at all. You know what? That works out, because I think I wanted to go back a little bit anyway to shoot an eye switch or two. With my newly obtained bow. So anyway, thank you all for listening to me try to explain that story or whatever. Um, if you know the feeling of what I'm talking about, by all means, <laughs> leave a comment or something about a similar situation. I'd love to know that I'm not the only person in the world that, you know, is insane, or apparently. But if you or just want to say... You know, that's just the way work. the world works, get over it. Well, hey, I've heard it plenty of times already lately, so... Uh, don't worry about it. In the next one, we're going to hopefully uh, finish the rest of the Spirit Temple. I'll see you guys then uh, tomorrow, I guess, by the time this goes up. Um, so, have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye.